So let's say we had this one liter solution of water. We know these water molecules are gonna react with themselves. These water molecules are gonna react with other water molecules, forming some hydronium and some hydroxide. And we know it's this concentration of this hydronium, it's the molarity of this hydronium that dictates the pH of the solution. It's the concentration of this hydronium that determines the pH and the acidity of the solution. And we know the higher the concentration of hydronium in a solution, the lower the pH and the more acidic the solution is. And we know hydronium and pH are directly related using this equation. For example, if we have this aqueous solution and we find out the hydronium ion concentration, we plug it into this equation and we can determine the pH of the solution, the acidity of the solution. So what if we wanted to change the pH of the solution? What if we wanted to make the solution more acidic? How could we do that? Well, we would have to somehow increase the concentration of hydronium. If we increase the concentration of hydronium, we will therefore create a lower pH and a more acidic solution. So how can we increase the hydronium ion concentration? Well, we could add an acid. For example, let's add this hydrochloric acid, this strong acid. What happens when we add this hydrochloric acid to the solution? Well, we know this hydrochloric acid is going to protonate some water. That's what acids do. They, they protonate water. So if we add this hydrochloric acid, it's going to protonate some water. And for example, if one molecule of hydrochloric acid pr protonates one molecule of water, it will create one molecule of hydronium. So therefore, we know this, this hydrochloric acid is going to protonate water, creating hydronium. And we know we're essentially going to have this chemical reaction where the hydrochloric acid reacts with water, where again, the hydrochloric acid protonates the water. When it protonates the water, it creates hydronium, and the hydrochloric acid creates its conjugate base, its, its chloride. However, you might wonder, for example, let's say we have this one liter solution, and let's say we specifically add one mole of hydrochloric acid to the solution. If we add one mole of hydrochloric acid to the solution, how much hydronium will we create? If we add one mole of hydrochloric acid, will that entire one mole of hydrochloric acid protonate an entire one mole of water, creating an entire one mole of hydronium? So if we add one mole of hydrochloric acid, will we create one mole of hydronium? Or will only some of that hydrochloric acid protonate only some water, therefore creating only some hydronium? Exactly how much hydronium will we create if we add one mole of hydrochloric acid to the solution? Well, we can determine that using this reaction's KEQ, its equilibrium constant. And we know how these equilibrium constants work. For example, if we add one mole of hydrochloric acid to the solution, we let it react. We let it react with the water, and it has this chemical reaction, and then we let it reach equilibrium. So we add the one mole of hydrochloric acid, it reacts, it reaches equilibrium, and then we take those equilibrium concentrations, those concentrations at equilibrium, and we plug in those concentrations at equilibrium to this equation, where again, we take the concentrations of the products at equilibrium and plug them into the numerator, and we take the concentrations of these reactants at equilibrium and plug them into the denominator. And if we were to do that, we would get the KQ of this reaction, the equilibrium constant of this reaction. And this reaction happens to have this huge KQ value. It happens to have this huge ratio. So what does that mean if this reaction has this huge KQ value, this huge ratio? Well, that tells us when this reaction reacts and reaches equilibrium, and we took those equilibrium concentrations and plugged them into this equation, we had relatively a lot of these products. We had relatively a lot of products relative to reactants. We let it react, we plug in those, react, those products concentrations, and we plug in the reactants concentrations, and we got this huge ratio. So that tells us at equilibrium, we have a, a lot of these products relative to reactants. We have the, essentially this huge ratio where we essentially, at equilibrium, we have a relatively large amount of products, and we have very few reactants. And that's why we got this huge ratio, this ratio of, pro, of react, products relative to reactants. So now that we know this, Exactly how much hydronium will we create? Well, again, we know this reaction strongly favors products. We know when it reacts and reaches equilibrium, there's a lot of products relative to reactants. So we know once we react and reach equilibrium, we have very little reactants, we have very little reactants, and we have a lot of products. We have relatively a lot of products relative to reactants. So we have very little of these reactants and we have a lot of products. So therefore, if we had one mole of hydrochloric acid, it essentially, at equilibrium, there's going to essentially be very little hydrochloric acid and where there's going to be a lot of these products being made. So essentially what this means is essentially that entire one mole of hydrochloric acid will protonate an entire one mole of water, creating an entire one mole of hydronium. So at equilibrium, we're going to essentially have one mole of hydronium and we're going to have very little 
of these, this reactant, this, this original undissociated hydrochloric acid. Because again, when we reach equilibrium and plug in those equilibrium concentrations, we have a lot of products relative to reactants. And, and we see that with this ratio. So we're going to have very little reactants and essentially it's going to fully dissociate, fully forming products. And we're essentially going to fully form these products and essentially fully forming hydronium. So now we know if we had one mole of hydrochloric acid, it essentially is going to react protonating an entire one mole of water, creating an entire one mole of hydronium. And at equilibrium, there's going to be very few of this undissociated hydrochloric acid, and it's essentially going to fully form products. So it's going to fully turn into this these products and this hydronium. So now we know we've created one mole of hydronium. So now we know how much hydronium we've created. So now we can determine the concentration of hydronium, and now we can determine the pH of the solution. And we know we've increased the hydronium ion concentration, so therefore we increased the pH or we decreased the pH and made the solution more acidic. And something important to realize is this is always true for strong acids. And there are six strong acids you need to be familiar with. These are the six strong acids you need to be familiar with. And all these six strong acids have huge KEQ values. They have huge equilibrium constants. And just rule of thumb, whenever you're dealing with an equilibrium constant of a of a acid, an acid reaction, instead of calling it a KQ, you call it a Ka. It's just the it's just a KQ for an acid reaction. We call it Ka. And these six strong acids essentially have huge Ka values, which means these, these six strong acids fully favor products and fully dissociate forming hydronium. So for example, let's say we had this aqueous solution and let's say instead, let's say we added three moles of this strong acid into the solution. Then we know if we had three moles of this strong acid, it fully dissociates and it will essentially create three moles of hydronium. And that's true for any of these six strong acids. They fully dissociate, fully forming hydronium. Let's do another example. Let's say we have another solution and let's say we added 1.5, 1.5 moles of this strong acid to an aqueous solution. Then we know it fully dissociates, fully forming products, and therefore creating 1.5 moles of hydronium. And that's true for any of these strong acids. If you had six moles of this hydrochloric acid, you'll create six moles of hydronium and et cetera. And again, this is because these six strong acids have huge Ka values that at equilibrium fully favor these products. So essentially the reaction is going to fully create products and essentially going to have very little reactants remaining. So therefore that entire moles of those, of those reactants are going to protonate an entire mole of water, creating an equal amount of hydronium. And, and that's always true for these six strong acids that you just need to memorize and be familiar with.